uh, I would I'd like to recognize all of you as our stakeholders and thank you all for for working with us uh, through all this long journey from 2012 up to now. There will be a session, we'll be talking a lot more about partnerships. I want to particularly recognize and thank Isabel for finding time to, to be with us today and make some remarks. I also want to single out uh, Juliet Sentungwe from MAIF. Uh, Juliet has been really our key and strong supporter of the the MOPOC project in Uganda, and I'd like to just single you out and say thank you very much, uh, and also for making time to come here. Uh, next slide, please, Peter. Now, this presentation, we will make it jointly uh, together with, with Emily. Uh, so it will be an interactive uh, um, presentation, and we did that deliberately. Uh, to, to pull out experiences that both Emily and I have. Uh, Emily was uh, very strongly involved in the MOPOC one, the first phase of, the, of this project. And I took over in the second um, um, pro, uh, phase of this project. So our combined uh, experiences uh, are very important. And we thought we could pull them out if we jointly uh, talked about this. The project goal you see there is for more POP2 to improve incomes of pig uh, body chain actors through market arrangement and sustainable integrated technology packages in Uganda. But we will be from time to time reflecting on objectives from uh, phase one and discussing uh, how that has shaped our work today. Uh, next slide. Emily, please. Thank you and uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'll just switch on my camera a bit so that uh, uh, you can see me. Right, okay. So I'll start by uh, reflecting backwards what the journey has been, where we started. Uh, and then over time will bring us all up to speed uh, where we are at now. So, uh, well, I joined in 2012 um, in the pig value chain in Uganda, but officially the pig value chain uh, uh, project, MOPOC 1, really started in 2011. And it started with a group of, uh, of people from Ilri, from, I don't know if there's anyone from Seattle, but uh, from the livestock CRP, uh, who had a scoping mission to Uganda and visited several partners. I think some of the sites where they went, uh, like you, uh, Masaka district, they met Lawrence Mayega there. Uh, they visited Mukono, uh, met uh, David Kiriabire, uh, among others. So uh, 2011, we started with a neglected sector a sector where not much uh, was going on in terms of pig research uh, and a sector where there was no much uh, uh, policy focus. Despite that, uh, demand for pork in Uganda was on the rise and that fueled an increase in pig population. So we have the graph on the right hand side there. So we see uh, the pig population keeps rising and this is mainly in response to, uh, to the demand for pork. Uh, although that was happening, uh, we had pig value chain actors and uh, uh, stakeholders in the sector who lacked voice. They could not advocate for the sector. There was no space uh, for them to advocate for the sector, partly because of lack of evidence uh, and also a proper platform where they could bring forward their issue. So from 2012, uh, this 2011 actually, uh, CRP Livestock started implementing the MOPOC uh, project. So in phase one, uh, the initial activities included, uh, the first one was really site selection. Uh, so some of you will remember, we came down to the, your districts or the different sites uh, with Danilo, uh, with Michelle, you know, trying to uh, pin down the specific locations where the MOPOC uh, project would focus. So after identifying a few uh, districts and of course also involving stakeholders in the identification of the sites, 
uh, we started with diagnostic studies. And these diagnostic studies are mainly to identify the constraints and opportunities in the POC value chains. Uh, that was followed by pilot testing of various interventions to address uh, the uh, constraints that were identified. So during MOPOC 1, yeah, we were also very busy uh, uh, building partnerships with different types of partners, the academia, uh, development partners. We tried a bit also with the private sector. Next slide, please. So that was MOPOC 1. Uh, so for MOPOC 2, we reflected back uh, on the learnings that we got from uh, MOPOC 1 and realize that it's important to have an integrated uh, intervention or integrated pro uh, project that was bringing different elements together. So for MOPOC 2, the entry point was really uh, the market level. In MOPOC 1, we focused quite a lot on the producer node of the value chain. So we were really looking and addressing uh, uh, pig farmers constraints. But then we realized that if we don't also address the constraints in the other nodes of the value chain, then not much can be achieved. So our entry point in MOPOC 2 uh, has then been the, 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 the market, uh, the market uh, point. And this is because it, it uh, forms a very strong business case, both for producers as well as the aggregators. So in MOPOC 2, uh, the strength is more around uh, uh, strengthening the linkages between the market actors who are the aggregators with the pig producers so that there's better relationship. Uh, there is some kind of agreement on what type of product uh, the farmers should be uh, delivering to the aggregators and how best aggregators can also support the farmers in order to deliver the type of products or pigs that they're looking for as aggregators. So we are following a market systems development approach uh, in that regard. And uh, we have ultimate business strategies who are uh, really supporting us on that as that's their strength. So in MOPOC 2, again, uh, a lot of stress is on the private sector uh, partnership. So we are engaging lots and lots of private sector players, mainly because of uh, purposes of sustainability uh, and ownership. So on one end, we have the market pull through uh, the entry point of the market, but on the other uh, end also, we have a technology push through what we call a pig smart platform. So the Pig Smart Platform uh, is an ecosystem that brings together different digital, digital uh, service uh, providers. So one element that's quite interesting in this regard is uh, the digital extension that pulls together uh, various elements uh, that, are, uh, that are key. So we have feeds, we have heart health, we have genetics and uh, environment all being packaged in one and being pushed out uh, to the farmers. So both a market pool as well as uh, a push through the pig, pig smart platform to enable farmers to take up some of the interventions. Next slide. So Ben is going to tell us a little bit uh, about the districts where we've been working. Over to you. Okay, thanks, uh, Emily. So uh, in, in more pork one, the phase one, uh, we couldn't obviously work everywhere in Uganda. So we had to focus uh, to some areas in Uganda where we thought had the highest potential for us to improve and make impact in the pig value chain. So in the phase one, we worked in Masaka, uh, Mukono and Kamuli in uh, the phase that was uh, funded by the IFAD uh, funding. And in phase two, we got further funding from the Irish Aid Project, and we expanded our, um, our uh, research sites uh, to Lira and Hoima uh, districts. So we were working in five districts. Uh, when we expanded our work again, uh, as Emily just explained to more, uh, more POC2, we added two more districts, um, PG and Wakiso. 
Although uh, we have some elements of research that is also covering Kampala uh, as a district, uh, particularly research work that is involving input and service uh, providers. So those are the areas that we have intervened in over the last uh, 10 years. Next. Next. Emily, please. Right, okay. So this uh, next uh, bit will focus more around the achievements that uh, we've made uh, from MOPOC 1 going through to MOPOC 2. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the peak value chain was more or less like a neglected uh, value chain and sector. But more and more, we are seeing more visibility yeah, as the value chain gets better and better understood. So for instance, uh, the POC sector is now becoming more visible on the national agenda. So the program has identified several policy gaps and catalyzed government interest in filling uh, those gaps. So we have a key partner from the office of the prime minister, uh, Mr. Julia Sokelo, who's here with us. And he's, he has helped us to shape some of this policy uh, gap so that we can package them neatly and uh, present them to uh, to government, you know, so that uh, there could be further discussions on how those gaps could be filled. Another big achievement is uh, the involvement of uh, of partners, different partners, yeah, working in collaboration with the project researchers to package the different interventions and also to implement those interventions. So there's this has catalyzed ownership by the various uh, uh, partners. And even if uh, we are not there, uh, several partners would talk about MOPOC and the elements and what they are doing in terms of the interventions. So these interventions have also included uh, evidence-based training and capacity building. So on the right-hand side there is just an, an excerpt from um, um, one of our partner, uh, PPM, PIG, production and marketing, uh, I'm told these days the name has changed a bit, but in MOPOC 1, PPM was heavily involved in capacity development of uh, peak value chain actors and scaling of interventions, particularly using our tested and proven uh, uh, interventions. Uh, the other big achievement around here is that now there's a better understanding of the constraints in the value chain, the opportunities and the best bets, what can work to improve the value chain. So when we started and we were trying to look for literature around peak value chain in Uganda, there was no, nothing much. But now if you uh, even go into Google and just uh, uh, type in keywords like peak value chain Uganda, there's lots and lots of materials. So we have scientific papers in peer reviewed journals. Uh, we have research reports, blog articles, fact sheets, videos, etc. So there's lots and lots of resources around the peak value chain. Next slide, please. So I had started by saying that um, uh, stakeholders in the sector didn't have a voice. So we are very happy now that uh, at least there is a platform that brings together different uh, stakeholders, including the value chain actors themselves. So this is in the form of uh, its alliances, in the form of uh, uh, multi-stakeholder uh, big platforms. So in MOPOC 1, uh, through partnership with SNV, we catalyze development of uh, five regional uh, platforms and one national platform. So in these platforms, there was lots of conversation going on around actions that can be taken to improve uh, the sector. Uh, so some of the regional platforms are still active, some are not so active, but we are happy that the conversation is going on. So through these uh, alliances or multi-stakeholder platform, uh, there was formation of three cooperatives, one large cooperative that brings together farmers from central region, another one in Greater Masaka uh, that pulls together different uh, cooperatives. It's a, it's a secondary cooperative, it's the Greater Masaka 
pig cooperative union. Then we also have aggregators who formed their own association in Masaka called the Masaka Pig Aggregators Association. So we are very pleased that through the MSP, several other things uh, have, uh, have arisen. Uh, next slide, please. So in the next slide, Ben is going to tell us a little bit about uh, uh, achievements around integration. Over to you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Emily. Uh, in uh, more POP2, uh, we aimed to, to integrate more of the way we, we deliver our research um, to, to the end users. And one of the things we, we did was to, to set up a PigSmart uh, platform, uh, which is an, an integrated platform of digital solution providers with the aim of um, strengthening pig farmers' uh, productivity, uh, both on-farm and uh, across the value chain. Now, uh, we, we have three key service uh, solution providers who are also uh, with us in this meeting. Uh, I will summarize a bit about some of the solutions that we managed to deliver through the PigSmart uh, platforms but uh, they will be expanding a lot on these solutions uh, through some of the posters that uh, we will be uh, viewing this afternoon. Uh, one of them is the feed, uh, feed calculator application uh, provided by SingleSpark, uh, Netherlands initially, but now we have the Uganda, uh, SingleSpark Uganda. This is a mobile app uh, that is used to to formulate uh, uh, simple rations, both for farmers and also uh, commercial feed producers using the available uh, feed resources. And through this, we have trained village agents who are based within uh, uh, villages where the farmers are based uh, so that they can continually offer support to the farmers uh, on the ground. We also trained uh, the technical extension officer uh, who are based in various districts with the aim of ensuring that these extension people uh, will continue to support the small scale commercial feed producers uh, to compound high, high quality commercial uh, pigs. We have reached 1,440 pig farmers who have used uh, this uh, feed, uh, feed calculator. The second uh, solution provider is the AgriTech Talk Africa, uh, who have a gross margin tool. Uh, this is a tool that helps uh, farmers to look at the, the cost of production of their pig uh, uh, industry, I mean the pig enterprises at farm level and determine uh, how those uh, uh, pig enterprises are are operating uh, or performing uh, economically. And this is a, a, a tool which has been delivered to 144 farmers in Masaka and uh, um, probably almost a close similar number in Mukono, we couldn't immediately get the, the exact figures there. But the key uh, thing there is we have trained the village agents also working with the farmers to calculate the farm input and output costs and discuss with them how, how and where to reduce the cost of their their pig enterprises to, to, to improve profitability at farm level. The other key uh, service provider is the, the uh, Ezi Greek or a, a Korean company, uh, which have a knowledge hub and an e-commerce platform. Uh, and this, through this pro, uh, platform, we provide village agents with input and product demand reports. And we also train farmers on the integrated packages of feeds, uh, health, genetics, heat stress, manure management, etc. And we have rolled this out to 225 farmers and we have produced 21 audio and five minute videos which are being used to train uh, farmers. As I said, you will hear a little bit more about this. Uh, we have a, a post on each of these solutions that you will be discussing later on. Next, please. The next uh, uh, slide is busy, 
but we think that uh, it is very important. And I'll take a little bit of time uh, to explain to you our training and participation to improve relations and build people's capacity within the pig value chain. As IRI, we have built capacity of our um, um, stakeholders uh, through, we have built capacity through partners and we do not do that uh, directly as IRI. And we have focused um, our uh, capacity building uh, efforts to input and service provider, to pig producers and to pig buyers whom we, we mostly popularly call uh, aggregators. And we have done that in various uh, areas of our intervention. We have set up a, a community uh, based um, uh, AI uh, scheme uh, with farmers, and we have collaborated with Betline and Makerere University on this. We have trained over 300 small-scale pig farmers, 200 and reached 244 households in two districts only. And we have inseminated about 290 uh, pigs, and 138 of them have we have been confirmed uh, uh, pregnant. And we have registered 52 liters born to date with an average of 18 piglets. The next area we have looked at is the biosecurity area to control African swine fever. All of you know African swine fever is a problem in Uganda. And we developed a, a, a biosecurity manual with local vets focusing uh, on African swine flu uh, and, and parasites and tested it tested that manual with a thousand farmers in central and northern uh, Uganda. The manual has been shared with DVOs in our project sites and it's, it, it's being used at the moment. The other area we have uh, worked in is a holistic uh, hard health approach uh, where we worked with the Swedish University, uh, SLU, Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. And we trained five vets uh, in Sweden uh, who have since come back and are running courses for various extension staff, both private and uh, public um, uh, officers. Uh, they have held a workshop with 22 farmers and veterinary officers, consultants and farmers uh, and, and various farmers to validate research outputs and carry out various types uh, of training. Um, in the uh, the other area we have worked in is the market arrangements for pig, uh, for, for pig keepers. As Emily explained, uh, our focus is to improve the market end of the value chain to create a pool uh, for investment in the productivity node of the value chain. And we work with ultimate business strategies um, and we've been uh, working with 70 pig buyers to, to facilitate conversation between the buyers and the farmers, um, including uh, training of the local government staff uh, who will champion this, uh, this approach into the future. And we have also involved uh, 30 buyers in continuing conversations uh, with farmers. The other area we have uh, uh, intervened in and uh, did a significant amount of training is the, the we piloted a training and certification schemes for small scale uh, feed producers to improve the quality of the, the feed reaching out to the farmers. And we have trained 87 feed producers. Uh, we, we have also trained 40 uh, feed mailers on the, uh, through the pig smart on the feed calculator. And we are continuing to mentor um, uh, almost 50 uh, feed mailers on good manufacturing practices of uh, livestock feed. And uh, finally, we, we also have trained 30 U U Ugandan women and youth uh, in climate change, climate resilience uh, and water sustainability, including methods uh, for helping uh, pigs with his history, and, and this is just from, uh, addressing issues around uh, climate change. Then across, 
we have been uh, training 30 and uh, women and uh, 30 youth in business development and managing and management giving them skills on how to improve their business uh, skills both input and service providers as well as the pig buyers uh, next please uh, um, uh, peter right okay so uh, we've also drawn a lot of lessons from uh, MOPOC 1 and MOPOC 2, particularly around uh, uh, strategies for increasing the chances of delivering impact at scale. So one big one is the involvement of the private sector in designing interventions and in some cases even implementing the interventions. So that has been key. And uh, the second one is around uh, scaling assessments. So considering early on uh, at the start, how these interventions could be uh, scaled up. Uh, establishing early partnerships with both local and central governments. So that's very key. It's impossible to work in the districts without involvement of, um, of the local government in the districts on one hand. And on the other hand, also involvement of the central government, you know, bodies like MAIF, uh, even Ministry of Water and Environment. So that has been key. Uh, another key learning is the importance of linking value chain actors with financial services to help their businesses grow. So many times we take it for granted that as long as uh, the technologies are there, that things will just happen. No, uh, there are other supportive services like uh, financing that uh, is critical for value chain actors. We, we can't say that we've been able to do that uh, properly in MOPOC 1 or MOPOC 2, but it's a learning. So going forward, uh, that's something that we need to take in our stride. Uh, the other one is around identifying the policies and legal frameworks that can further support uh, the peak value chain. So the technologies may be there, but as long as uh, the enabling environment has gaps, then we can't achieve much, particularly in terms of also scaling, um, scaling our interventions. And then identifying the right people in government to work with in order to drive policy change, uh, because people have different passion. So it's important to identify the champions who can uh, support us to drive policy change. Uh, so those are the key lessons from the project. Uh, next slide. Right, so in this slide, we have uh, several partners. We've listed several partners we've worked with uh, in MOPOC 1 and also in MOPOC 2. So many times we would just display this and uh, let each partner look for their names in there. So today we want to make a deliberate effort to mention each partner by name. And under normal circumstances, this is where we'd be having our ululations, uh, but unfortunately we can't ululate because it'd be disturbing uh, other people. So I want to recognize the partners who we've worked with in MOPOC 1. From the public sector, we've worked with uh, MAIF. We worked with NADS when NADS was still uh, on the ground. Uh, we've worked with the district local governments of Kamuli, Mukono, uh, Masaka, Hoima, and Lira as well as KCCA. We don't take you for granted. Thank you very much. We've worked with the research uh, education institutions, uh, including um, uh, NARO. Sorry, please mute if you're not speaking. Thank you. We've worked with NARO. We've worked with Naliri. We've worked with Makerere University, particularly uh, three colleges, COVAB, KAES, and CNS. We've also uh, worked with the uh, SLU uh, in phase one as well as phase two. Uh, we've worked with Gulu University. We've worked with Nagrik uh, and DB. So thank you very much, that category. We've also worked with the number of NGOs. Uh, when we started in phase one, VEDCO was very key in Kamuli. So uh, they were one of our key partners, particularly uh, on the Eastern part of Uganda. We've worked with SNV, we've worked with Veterinarians Without Borders, we've worked with Enterprise Uganda, both in phase one and phase two. We've worked with Iowa State University Uganda program. So that's an NGO that Iowa State has registered 
uh, here in Uganda and particularly working in Eastern Uganda. We've worked with several private sector players in Mopok One. We've worked with BRAC, we've worked with PPM, we've worked with Agro Empowerment Center, Union of Pig Cooperatives of Greater Masaka. We've worked with Wambizi Cooperative. We've worked with Greenfields Uganda Limited. We've worked with Oga Farms, particularly focusing on indigenous microorganisms. We've worked with Devonish Nutrition. So to all the partners whom we've worked with in Mopok One, a very big thank you. I hand over to Ben to acknowledge partners uh, we've been working with in Mopok too. Yeah, thanks, Emily. As Emily said, um, uh, unlike in the past where we have flashed this uh, uh, slide and passed over it quickly, uh, we want to particularly acknowledge all of you and uh, who have worked with us. And I'm sure all of you belong to one of these uh, 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 partners we've listed here. In, the, uh, in more POP2, uh, I would like to say that uh, we have had uh, big support from the office of the Prime Minister and uh, Dr. Julius Okello is with, he, with us here today. Julius, thank you very much for the support you have given us um, and taking time to even uh, attend some of the the workshops that we have held under uh, more POP2 uh, on the heat stress uh, work. Maif, um, Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries. I mentioned again, um, Juliet is here with uh, her team from Maif. Quite a number of them are here. Thank you very much for uh, your continued support all along from uh, phase one into this uh, phase two. Um, we expanded really our work and strengthened our collaboration with the Ministry of Water and Environment, particularly on our uh, climate change and heat, heat stress uh, work, um, which uh, Julius was also involved in. Our district local governments have continued to support us very, very much. Mukono, Masakam, Piji, Wakiso, um, the Kampala Capital City Council Authority, um, and also the um, National Bureau of Standards, uh, who are also a new um, collaborator who came on board in, in phase two. Uh, in the research and education institutions, Naliri has continued to strongly support us in the pay value chain, Makerere University uh, across various interventions, uh, feeds animal health, genetics, uh, Makerere has featured in all those, uh, Gulu University has featured in, the, in our feeds intervention um, and Nagrek and DB has supported our community uh, AI scheme that we, we are currently setting up. SNV um, have continued to move along with us uh, all along and Enterprise Uganda who are very, very active in the, in the business um, uh, area of uh, training and we appreciate uh, uh, the work that you have done in more POC2. If you, as Emily pointed out, we focused a lot on the private sector in the more more POC2 and we had um, several um, actors there, uh, stakeholders, vetline services uh, who are working on the community AI uh, scheme, uh, single spark uh, Uganda, I talked about it again, Accorion, um, uh, Agritech Talk, uh, Ultimate Business Strategies, Robert Katende is here with us. We have several feed millers, um, uh, I said up to 87 of them, we work together. Uh, Masaka Pig Aggregate Association, Great Masaka Cooperative Union, uh, Animal Farm Investment in Mukono, uh, Mukono Animal Farm Investment. Uh, uh, this is also a private sector actor who has supported us a lot. Uh, in more POP2. Next slide, I believe coming to the last slides there. Right, just to remind us um, uh, the composition of more POC2 apart from our partners that we've mentioned. So uh, more POC2 is uh, of course under the livestock CGI research program which is led by International Livestock Research Institute and implemented in partnership with the Alliance of Biodiversity International and CIET, at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences, commonly known as SLU, 
at the Royal Tropical Institute, uh, abbreviated as KIT. So these are um, uh, the partners who are leading MOPOC. So this program builds on 10 years of livestock research for development and integrates interventions from five livestock CRP flagships as well as cross-cutting uh, uh, themes. So we have livestock genetics flagship, livestock health flagship, livestock feeds and forages flagship, livestock and environment, and livestock, uh, livestock livelihoods and agri-food uh, systems. Cross-cutting, we have uh, gender as well as capacity development. So that's the project team and there are several names within each of those boxes that are working together uh, to make MOPOC2 a success. Uh, thank you. Next slide. So um, just to remind you of the funding, we want to thank very much uh, the people who have funded uh, this 10-year research on the pig value chain in Uganda. The MOPOC1 project was funded by uh, European Commission and IFAD 2011 to 2013. Uh, and then uh, after that, we got additional funding from the Irish aid uh, from 2014 to 2017. Um, uh, making up the, the more POC1. More POC2 was funded by the Livestock CGIR Research Program uh, from 2019 to 2021 this year, and it's coming to an end at the end of this year, uh, 31st uh, January. Next. We had also some other bilateral uh, contributing projects that we thought we could mention. Save Food Fair Food uh, project uh, funded by GIZ, uh, FO and H. As this is a, a CGIR um, a program from 2012 to 2015. We also had another project called MPIG, uh, using mobile SMS uh, learning for pigs and innovation. Uh, um, disseminating information through the mobile phones, funded by IRI and GIZ 2015 to 2016. And lastly, in MOPOC2, we had a project on Uganda Pig Genetics Project funded by Austrian Development Agency from 2017 to 2021. would like to thank all these uh, donors for uh, providing their funds to support the pig value chain work in Uganda. Next. <laughs> 